know discourse means communication that we use. And uh, gendered, something that is based on male and female gender. And uh, position, how you are given importance in uh, your talk, how importance is given to your talk. So all these things will be introduced in this module. So first of all, researchers relating to our field, they reject ideas proposed by Robin Lacker. They say that it is not that you are powerful or powerless because your language is uh, weak or strong. They say that what actually matters is who is the speaker, who talks. The utterer should be powerful. Even if women speak authoritatively, okay, if they start using strong language, would they be regarded as strong? Definitely not. So there is a question mark on the uh, assumptions or on the observations made by Robin Decker. Uh, there are other linguistic indicators, actually, we should be considered to see whether the language is powerful and the utterer is powerful or not. And uh, when we talk about gender here, definitely the concept of power is involved. Gender, language and power, they all are related with each other. These indicators which are suggested by those researchers who uh, disagree with uh, Robin Lacker, they are forms of address, choice of second person pronoun, and honorary fix. Let's see how these factors uh, are involved in gendered discourse. Terms of address are like uh, please, sir, Mr., ma'am. They show respect for the addressee, definitely. This is very common in our culture. These terms show social distance. Sometimes we do that because this is culturally demanded, culturally required. But on other occasions, they show social distance between the speaker and the addressee. And we have called it in previous modules, negative politeness. The politeness is actually the expectation of the addressee that my public self-image should be maintained, should be taken care of. This is called negative politeness. I have explained it uh, when we talked about politeness. If these addresses, terms of address, we show respect. If they are used unreciprocally, means you use them, but in response to that, your addressee doesn't use these terms. So it is not respect, it is deference. See, we are using two terms in this discussion, respect and deference. Usually we take them as similar, but they aren't. When there is no reciprocity in terms of address, speaker uses, addressee doesn't use. So this is deference. Okay. And when this is reciprocal, both mutually use terms of address for each other, this is called respect. Use of first name. This is also a very important thing. If it is done unreciprocally, it shows lack of respect or lack of formality, lack of positive politeness, closeness. There is distance. Again, in other words, negative politeness. How it happens that uh, you uh, you say 
uh, someone as uh, sir or mister. And, but in response to that, that person addresses you by your first name. So if this is uh, in this way, so it shows again a uh, lack of respect or lack of familiarity or closeness. In American English, men are addressed by their titles even on phone calls. Uh, phone callers, they address them as Mr. Sir, etc. But when they talk with women, they address them with their first names. And definitely when women call some person, uh, they would use terms of uh, respect for them. But in response to that, they use first name of women and this shows a lack of respect. So we partially conclude with reference to the first factor that was pointed out that uh, this also shows difference, gender difference between talk, uh, the use of terms of address for each other. So on the basis of this, we partially conclude that what is our position in discourse? It depends on our gender, whether we are male or female.